Hi, I'm Lee and this is NASA Now. Question for you, what's your ideal environment? Sunny, 72 degrees, light breeze. How about living in a place that's so dry it only gets rain once every 10 years? Can life even exist? We're going to take you there and searching for life on Mars, a stunning discovery by NASA scientists. That's ahead. But first, here's what's happening at NASA now. We're just a couple of weeks away from the launch of Space Shuttle Endeavor. In the meantime, it was a successful and final 39th mission for Space Shuttle Discovery. Back on Earth now, the STS-133 crew members delivered important spare parts to the International Space Station, along with Robonaut 2, the first humanoid robot to work in space. The Orbiter Discovery will soon be making its way to the Smithsonian, where people can have an up-close and personal look at this amazing technological achievement. Now, let's take a look at the past. Off June 10, 2003, NASA launched Spirit, one of two Mars exploration rovers to launch that summer. On January 3, 2004, after traveling a distance of 487 million kilometers, that's 302.6 million miles, Spirit landed on Mars. Only three hours after landing, Spirit began returning its first pictures from the surface of the fourth planet from the sun. Searching for life on Mars. It's a mission for NASA scientists Dr. Alfonso de Villa and Dr. Margarita Marinova from NASA Ames Research Center in Northern California. They're here to share some fascinating findings. My name is Margarita Marinova. My name is Alfonso de Villa. I'm currently working on trying to understand the high elevation dry valleys in Antarctica. And uh, I do work in extreme environments on Earth which are considered to be analogs to Mars. really try to understand extreme environments and a lot of that relates to what we see on Mars. Mars is a very extreme dry and cold desert and so on Earth we search for places which are like Mars so we can understand how life can survive in these conditions. The driest desert on Earth is in Chile, it's called the Atacama Desert. It never rains any microorganism in the soil doesn't have access to any liquid water. In Antarctica, it's very cold, it is very dry. And then through that, we can really go to a place like Mars and say, when was the last time that there could have been life on Mars, given what we know from the limits of life on Earth? As far as we know, organisms really need water in order to survive. But when we really look, there are definitely places where there's no obvious water, there are no rivers, there are no lakes, but there's still organisms living there. So for example, one thing that was found is that even at freezing temperatures, organisms can use the edges of ice as effectively liquid. Another example actually in sandstones, especially in Antarctica, is that they'll live inside the rock. There's actually enough room between the grains of sand that they'll live in there, um, and it's warmer, there's some moisture. The place we found uh, lots of life in the Atacama, microbial life, was the interior of salt. Inside this salt, we find large numbers of microorganisms, green microorganisms, which are called photosynthetic because they use the light of the sun uh, to make up their food. It turns out that salt in the Atacama provides that which is most important for life and which is not found in the Atacama, which is liquid water. Actually measuring the chemistry of the environment, measuring how much moisture is available, even just as water vapor in that environment, we can bracket the conditions under which these organisms can survive. We know that Mars has been dry for a very long time. We know that there was water early in the beginning of uh, in the history of the planet, but now it's completely dry. What you see here is a picture of Mars. The white deposit, uh, where you have the large impact crater, this has been uh, with, uh, by satellite, they have shown that this deposit contains chloride. Chloride is one of the components of halite, salt that is called halite, and it's exactly the same salt we put in our food. It's been suggested that this is actually an ancient lake bed 
and what you see on the surface are the evaporated salts. The same, exactly the same situation we have in the Atacama. And so we're trying to understand what do organisms really need to survive? What strategies can a microorganism uh, develop to survive when conditions become so, so dry. And so we can really get a very in-depth understanding of what's happening in these areas, what conditions are there, how do they affect it. And then from that knowledge, we can take it and apply it to Mars. If you want to bring more insight and the excitement of discovery into your classroom, be sure to check out the Fingerprints of Life education content module on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. In this content module, you can get students to answer the question, how is the temperature of an organism's environment related to its growth and survival? Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when it's all systems go for Space Shuttle Endeavor, NASA's next mission, STS-134. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.